G'day and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to put one of these onto one of these. Yep, I've got my BF2 XL Falcon Ute, NAU Barra, and I have all of this to throw on this. I haven't done this before, I've played with plenty of turbos, I haven't done a NA Barra conversion, so you're going to come along the journey with me. Um, I've got pretty much everything I need, I've got a couple of things coming in the post, but we're going to learn together. There's a lot of people that diss it, I don't really care what people think. I know people are getting good reliable results when it's done properly, and a lot of it's in the tune. So let's get into it. I've already taken my, uh, my header off, the heat shield's off, um, intake pipe is off there, bumper's off, which all needs to come off. Um, got to make room for intercooler piping and all that sort of stuff. Now I'm going for a full factory setup. I don't have anything modified. I do have some bigger um, injectors just in case we need them. I know they do run the stock injectors. BA, uh, sorry, the NA, NA and turbo injectors are the same, but we've got some bigger ones just in case and 42 pounds if we need them. Um, gonna run a standard ECU and a external pressure regulator. I'm not going for maximum performance because the I've got stock internal, stock gearbox, it's the four speed, stock diff. So later on, yeah, maybe down the track, we might upgrade this, bigger rods, bigger valve springs, forge pistons, big exhaust, big turbo, you know, six, 700 horsepower, but that's not today. We are just going for reliability around 340 horsepower to 50, 260 kilowatts, maybe. We'll see what happens. Now, excuse me while I talk and work one-handed. Um, I am a qualified mechanic and I have played with turbos, but like most mechanics, especially my era, um, the majority of the turbo work that I've done and experience that I've had has been at work replacing a blown turbo on a factory car or a cracked manifold or tuning it or servicing it or whatever else. Um, I've had no experience with tuning um, ECUs, flash tunes, all that sort of stuff. Back in the day at TAFE, um, we did a lot of work with dynos, but in those days it was carburetors, it was distributors, and all the tuning was done with jetting and um, remapping the distributor by adjusting weights and the counterweights inside the distributor, different springs and stuff like that to change the curve of the power. So pretty much what a computer does these days, um, but very, very different to what I'm used to. Dorse manifold is on and on for good. Um, one thing I'm yet to confirm, and we'll find out in a second, is where the water feed comes from for the turbo. One thing I want to do before we go any further is just confirm that the crossover um, pipes all line up with the NA setup. Mainly that guy. Yep, that's gonna work. Um, one thing I was thinking of doing and it's cutting up the original heat shield off the header um, and making it work around this area. I do have a cover for the turbo, but I don't have the factory replacement for that guy. So we'll work something out there just to make sure we don't have too much heat going into these pipes. And use what do I have to move from inside of here to get my intercooler in. I'm gonna reckon that horn's gotta to have to go. Um, but I don't know. A genuine Garrett one, which is really cool. I did think about getting a Chinese aftermarket intercooler. They, you can buy them, they're bigger than this. Um, but I think I'd rather quality over uh, an unknown. Um, genuine stuff's always going to be more efficient, so I don't know if you're going to get much better performance out of a bigger Chinese one. We'll just stick with this for the time being anyway. And I think I found how it goes in. Um, there's already holes for it, so where are they there? And they're behind the bumper rail, and uh, yes, the horn has got to be moved. And I will assume it probably bolts onto this bracket. Portion of this plastic shield comes up as well to allow for the pipes. So this, uh, this is a power steering cooler, believe it or not. Cooler pipe, it is in the way of the intercooler. Intercooler is mounted. Um, I was actually able to mount the horn back in there once it was all in, uh, in its factory position, which is fantastic. The only thing I haven't worked out yet is this stupid 
cooler. It's definitely not rocket science, and uh, yeah, I'll leave you with that one, but is it even necessary? It's only for the power steering. It's not as if it's gonna do a lot. I'm sure there is a solution. I will have a quick look online and see what people are doing. Alrighty, a little bit of mucking around, only because I didn't realize that I'd been shortchanged a lower intercooler pipe, so I'm gonna have to source one of those. Um, I have worked out a solution for this cooler. Um, I couldn't really find anything online apart from replacing it with an aftermarket one. Um, I've got a bit of an idea where I can still use this, trim it up and root it somewhere else. So that will work, but I don't want to do that until I work out where this goes. I've got no idea where that goes. I can only guess it goes down and under there, but or through there, I don't know. So I won't touch that until I get that pipe. Um, so let's go up top and um, do what we've got to do up here. I think it's time to throw Mr. Turbo on. Once he's installed, then we've got to go down underneath and modify the sump. So the you know, NAEs have the same sump as the turbo, except where the oil um, return line goes in, it's not drilled or tapped. So that's one of the jobs we've got to do. So in my hunt for parts, which I will say has been quite enjoyable, this whole process has been a lot of fun. Um, half the fun's in building this stuff and making it work, and that's uh, I'm really enjoying this. Anyway, I was able to find a genuine Garrett. It's a uh, GT3582R. Um, which is a ball bearing turbo. Um, the only issue with this turbo, I'm going to take this apart, is the core is cactus. Um, the guy said he had a problem with his oil feed and it fried it, but it came with a brand new genuine Garrett core. Um, and it was pretty cheap because he'd had it a while, never actually fitted it. We ended up putting a second hand one in his car and sold the car. So I've got the new core for it. So everything is genuine goat. Um, this is really what I wanted to do. I didn't want to go putting Chinese in there. Um, it's just my preference. So I'm going to throw this together um, with the new core and we'll chuck it on the car. Look at that. Beautiful. Alrighty, we've got the turbo mounted. Um, I've also fitted my oil line, which is the pressure line, and worked out the cooling line. So I'm just going to run them through here, through the turbo. That one's been cut up to there, so that'll feed my the cooler for the um, the turbo oil feed. What I'm going to do now is get under this side, uh, remove the oil pressure switch or whatever it is down there, the oil temperature switch, whatever we take out, fit in the feed line, which is going to come down underneath um, and get that side all finished. And then we'll get back under there where I showed you last time and we'll uh, try and fit the uh, oil return. Righto. Very, very difficult to see and I'm going to film myself doing it. But I've removed the oil filter. And let's see if I can get this up there up here I think that's it is the from what I believe it's an oil temperature sensor I don't really care what it is it's the oil line that we need to tap into to get our pressure to our oil feed for our turbo let me show you what you need so the block has a 3.8 thread in it so is the uh, the switch in there so you need a double-ended male 3.8 adapter, a 3.8 female T, and a dash 4 3.8 um, NTP fitting. There's the part number that I got there. So you need one of those. So that'll uh, that'll fit my oil line that's coming over the top. That'll go into the block, and then. The original switch will go back into there. There's a better view of it from the top. I don't know if you can see it. Let me get this down. Focus. That's in there. Right. 
in the middle. Where's my finger? That guy. I'm gonna get him out. Put that two piece in there. Alrighty, ready to go back in. If you're not sure, it's the grey one. And when you take it out, it's gonna have oil behind it. So it's right above the oil filter. Chuck it back in, put the oil line on and that side of it's finished. Here you go, oil line in is done. One thing you must do, and I saw this on another guy's video, thank you very much. Um, this is your main positive battery line to your starter motor. It runs right next to the um, turbo. So you need to unpop those clips there and pop it down, reroute it down underneath where the factory turbo ones go. There are holes for the little black clips to pop in. So just get it away from the, the main body here because it'll just melt. Oil returns done. That wasn't hard. I wasn't sure if my drill would fit between the chassis rail and the sump, but it did. Um, so that was easy to do. So all my oil and cooler lines are done. Turbo's mounted, manifold's on. Um, what else have we done? Work that stuff that we need to sort out into cooler. We got that in. Got to get my bottom pipe. I've got to sort out my exhaust to make that fit. And then on the top, I've got to remove the throttle body so I can replace the map sensor with the one for the turbo, which is the two bar, I think they call it. Um, I've got a four bar fuel pressure regulator to put in it replace the um, the NA one and I've also got the injectors so the injector rail's got to come out 